Hello, Fight fans. It's So Cal Val here with another Fight TV exclusive interview. I am joined today by Ring of Honor star and wrestling legend Christopher Daniels. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks very much. It's so great to talk to you. I, I'm so excited to talk about the biggest event in ROH. It is the 15th anniversary of Ring of Honor. There's so many reasons to celebrate. But first of all, how, how are you feeling going into this pay-per-view on March 10th? Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I'm a little uh, trepidatious just because I know that uh, this is a lot. It's a big deal for me. This might be the last title shot I ever have. And so I'm going into this with a very much all or nothing mentality uh, yeah. as I go for the world championship. With well, a big match for you, it's a big night for the fans, and I'm sure it's a big night for everyone involved with Ring of Honor to, to celebrate 15 awesome years of Ring of Honor action. But um, we did get a lot of questions on Twitter for you, Daniels, and okay. uh, I, I managed to narrow down a few that I think um, will get some great answers for you. So let's get right into it. Um, El Igaber Ignabarable, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Um, Go not the dashing admin. We'll Go say, not yeah. That's the Japanese. Thing. Okay. Neither. He, he wants to know which comics are you reading these days other than your own and what's your favorite story? Um, well, right now, I'm, a, I'm always been a Marvel guy. So the stuff that I'm enjoying right now for Marvel Comics, um, Monsters Unleashed just started a miniseries and a lot of uh, tie-ins to that particular miniseries. And that's pretty cool. Um, I just finished Civil War II. Uh, anything by Brian Michael Bendis is good. So Jen, uh, Jessica Jones, uh, Spider-Man. And uh, Invincible Iron Man and Infamous Iron Man are my picks. Who's your top favorite comic book, ca book character of all time? And I ask this because we used to have so much fun working with Ben Morrison, the Marvel guys. And, um, you know, fans knew that you were not just a comic book fan, but you were so knowledgeable about that. So out of all the Marvel characters or any superheroes, who's your favorite? Uh, top to bottom, it's always been Wolverine. The first thing that got me into comic books was Chris Claremont and John Byrne's run on Uncanny X-Men. And they featured Wolverine in a way that appealed to me. And that character, I think that's the run that got most people into that character. And uh, and then down the line, Hugh Jackman's portrayal of him in the movies obviously made him more of a household name. Yeah. But uh, I, I've been a fan of Wolverine since the late 80s. So that's how old I am. So awesome. figure the math. <laughs> Next uh, question is um, at all hail Eric. He would like to know: Would you rather have a long reign or be a multi-time Ring of Honor champion? Interesting. <laughs> well, I'd like to win the championship first before I decide whether it's a long-term thing or it's something I do more than once. Right. But honestly, I think a long reign would be great. Um, it, it all depends on the frequency of the title defenses for me. Um, you know, I, I realize that in Ring of Honor, you don't just get handed a Ring of Honor world title. So I'm sure if I were to win, that uh, the challengers would have to earn their way there. But it depends on who I would be wrestling and how often I'd be wrestling. But, um, yeah, I'd rather not lose the belt at all if I could help it. <laughs> that would be great. That would be yeah, uh, the utmost awesome. importance. <laughs> Um, Nikita, it's XX Nikki XX89. It's a very saucy uh, Twitter there, Nikki. Yeah. Uh, she asks, "What kind of legacy do you wish to leave behind?" Uh, honestly, I, I just hope that the fans that came to see me wrestle enjoyed and felt like they they got their money's worth out of me. Um, you know, my goal when I first got into this was really just to support my family doing what I love to do. But at this point now where I've sort of done that and, you know, the the fruits of my labors being the house that I live in and the daughter and son that I'm helping to raise and my wife, uh, you know, it would be nice to think that all of this work was appreciated by the people that paid money to see it. And so one of the, I guess one of the best things that I can get a lot of times is when a fan comes up to me and says they've watched me for such a long time or they've followed my career and they've enjoyed my work, whether it was Ring of Honor or TNA or on the independent scene or in Japan. Um, that to me means a lot just because I know that I, I feel like the feeling that I got when I was a wrestling fan, I hope that I've instilled that feeling in wrestling fans as well. And hopefully, you know, some of those wrestling fans will grow up and become wrestlers and sort of pass that feeling down the line. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to actually expound upon this question because you mentioned young wrestlers and there are so many that would like to be like Christopher Daniels. But there are so many that, that tweet us and ask, you know, how do I get involved with wrestling or what, what advice would you give someone getting into wrestling? And, and someone like you, I think, would have really sound advice. So what are some things that someone can do uh, to learn from Christopher Daniels to maybe one day be like Christopher Daniels? Well, first of all, um, with the prevalence of wrestling schools in the United States, um, it's easy to find a wrestling school, but it might be hard to find a quality wrestling school. So right. I always sort of go by the notion that if that person that's training you has been where you want to go, for example, Lance Storm and the Lance Storm Academy, Team 3D's uh, yeah. Academy down in Florida, uh, the Ring of Honor School in Pennsylvania, like all of these places that have – trainers that have wrestled in the spots that you want to go to that's basically where you want to learn from because those guys have been where you want to be and they can tell you what they did to get where they were most successful and hopefully you can take that that lesson and apply it to your own life and then once one of the things that i always tell all young wrestlers is that once you know how to do stuff like the the physicality of pro wrestling is the first thing that you learn. And once you learn that uh, and you start wrestling in front of crowds, then you start to learn the when and the why to do things. And so I tell wrestlers, the most important part of that is going out and wrestling as many different people as you can for as many different promoters as you can, because you have to be confident in yourself as a professional wrestler to the point that if you go to a, a, a new federation, a new company, and you walk into a locker room and you meet a guy for the very first time, and then a couple hours later you can wrestle an entertaining match with him, that's when you become a commodity to a, pro a promoter, is the point where that promoter goes, well, I can put him in the opening match, I can put him in the main event, I can make him a bad guy, I can make him a good guy, I can put him in there with a high flyer or a brawler or a technical wrestler. When you adapt, when you can adapt to the styles of your opponents, and put on a good match with whoever they put in the ring with you, that's when you become valuable to a promoter and that's when you get booked. Definitely, very, very awesome advice. Um, Steven, you we were talking a little bit about um, longevity and, and being value, valuable to a company. And this is a great question from Steven at SD Chalmers 010. He says, how have you been able to stay at such a high standard your whole career and not slow down? And I would love to know this because you are, go, you're always going a mile a minute and you're always, you know, um, on the road and you've been so respected and, and active uh, this entire time. So how, how do you do that? It's energy drinks? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of that. Um, <laughs> I sold my soul to the devil long ago. Oh, that's uh, what it I, is. There's a secret. Okay. I drink, uh, I drink from the fountain of youth and I bathe in the Lazarus pit. So um, <laughs> honestly, um, a lot of it is just pride at this point because I want to continue to wrestle at a high level and I'm surrounded by guys that push me to continue to wrestle at a certain level. So, I mean, you know, when you're traveling with guys like Frankie Kazarian and you're wrestling against people like the Young Bucks and the Motor City Machine Guns and War Machine, like these guys are all younger and some of them are stronger, some of them are faster, some of them are better high flyers than me, but I continue to have to compete at that same level or else I'm gonna get left behind. So a lot of it is just sheer pride of knowing that if I don't step it up, I'm going to get left behind and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to get out of this. Um, so, I mean, when I'm surrounded by the talent, the level of talent that I am, uh, especially at Ring of Honor, it, it forces you to sort of step your game up and keep doing what you can do to to work at that level. Awesome. That's very cool. And I think it's good to have competition and, and there's always going to be like the young bucks or someone sort of nipping at your heels. And there's so much great talent um, in Ring of Honor. And, you know, you've you've travel all over the world wrestling who are some of the ones that you see being you know bigger deals one day or, or the next you know the next big thing are there, are there any wrestlers that stand out to you that you think maybe they're a little underrated or I, I don't know if underrated is the word I certainly would say that more of the wrestling fan base needs to know about these guys yeah um certainly uh you know probably the first three guys that I think of in Ring of Honor are Dalton Castle Marty Skrull and Adam Page. I mean, yeah. all three of those guys, um, since they've come into Ring of Honor, have sort of gone on a tear. Um, Dalton Castle uh, 
is competing for the world championship on April 1st in Florida. And I mean, he's had a wild ride since he's come to Ring of Honor. Marty Skorl is the current Ring of Honor TV champion. And he won he won that his first weekend in the company. And, and then Adam Page, uh, you know, since he's been in Ring of Honor, since he started with uh, BJ Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs and Roddy Strong as part of the decade, and then moving into a position with the Bullet Club, he's certainly starting to come into his own as a professional wrestler. And uh, I think that, you know, probably within a year's time, you're going to be talking about Adam Page in terms of holding a championship in Ring of Honor. Definitely. Well, it's, it's great that um, that you have they have their stamp of approval from Christopher Daniels. But what's also great about Fight TV is that every Monday you can watch Ring of Honor for free at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's like unheard of. Fans tell us all the time on social media how much they love the weekly, weekly Ring of Honor shows. But what we're here to talk about today is March 10th, the 15th anniversary of Ring of Honor. And it's going to be in Las Vegas. It's going to be a big celebration. But you are slated to face Adam Cole, who is a three-time Ring of Honor champion, but there is a, a, a way that that could change. So can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, before March 10th happens, we are wrestling. Uh, Manhattan Mayhem takes place on March 4th uh, in the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City, and Adam Cole is slated to defend the title against Bobby Fish. And Bobby Fish, who is a three-time World Tag Team Champion and a former Ring of Honor television champion, Certainly has a lot of momentum on his side. He won survival of the fittest last year to earn this title shot. And it could possibly be Bobby Fish versus Christopher Daniels yep. in Las Vegas. But it doesn't matter to me whether it's Adam Cole or Bobby Fish. Um, you know, I'm someone that has been with Ring of Honor off and on since the very first show. And so if this is the last opportunity I ever get to be world champion, um, the name of the person against across the ring for me doesn't matter. It's just a matter of, am I going to become world champion? And if I have to beat Bobby Fish, if I have to beat Adam Cole, if I have to beat them both, uh, that's something that I'm willing to do and able to do. Awesome. Well, you know, it's something that it's it's the most coveted championship, obviously, in Ring of Honor. But what do you think makes a great champion? And, and what do you think you'll bring to the Ring of Honor championship if or when you win it? Um, well, certainly, I think the quality of opponents you have makes the champion. Um, you, you go back to someone like Ric Flair, who, when he was NWA champion, traveled the world and wrestled the best in every territory. Um, you know, and and even though that format of wrestling has sort of gone by the wayside in terms of the territories and the traveling champion, Ring of Honor has always been a destination for great wrestlers to burst out onto the wrestling scene. And so I feel like there's a higher level of talent that's wanting to come to Ring of Honor and trying to make their way into Ring of Honor. And those that actually make their way into Ring of Honor, then they have to wrestle, they have to turn it up a notch to stay in Ring of Honor and to earn a title shot. Right. So I feel like the Ring of Honor champion is consistently under the gun in terms of the quality of, of opponents that he has. And if that ends up being me after March 10th, then I look forward to wrestling guys like Dalton Castle and Marty Skrull and, and Adam Page and, and uh, you know, everybody. I could I could sit here and name the, the 30, 40 guys that are in Ring of Honor now that deserve an opportunity to be seen and to have an opportunity at the World Championship. Awesome. Well, we could very well be talking to the new Ring of Honor champion today, uh, but we'll have to find out what happens on March 10th when Ring of Honor Wrestling presents its 15th anniversary, and you can pre-order the event right now on the Fight TV app. The great thing about our app, as you know, is you can watch on the go on your mobile screen, or you can gather your friends, which I will be doing on March 10th, and watching on the big screen. So, Daniels, thank you so much. Any final words for our Fight fans? Uh, no, just thanks very much. Um, I appreciate Fight TV and uh, the fans that follow Ring of Honor on Fight TV. Um, it's like you said, uh, a lot of fans watch Ring of Honor television through Fight TV. Uh, it's a great way to watch if you don't have a syndicated uh, station near you. And um, just continue to appreciate the, the fan support and all the well wishes going into March 10th. Awesome. Well, best of luck going into the 15th anniversary of Ring of Honor. I can't wait to see it. Don't need it. Thank you. <laughs>